Marina Marina, full of rocks. Destructible rocks, telling you to attack them, to destroy them. Is this how you feel about rocks? Are you sick and tired of breaking down rocks just to walk down the ramp to get owned? Well, stay tuned for how to destroy rocks. Hello everyone, I went to lose here bringing to you my first ever guide. And here I'm going to show you how not to break down rocks. A lot of beginners actually do this. What they do is they select all their units and right click the rocks. What it leads to is this giant concave, which is, you know, an arc of units firing at a single point, attacking the rocks. And what happens is all the new units that come are stuck behind the first wave of units that are attacking the rocks. Here you can see all the marines and marauders completely confused as they're just dancing behind the first line of fire, trying to figure out how do I get to these rocks? My buddies ain't moving for me. So you might be thinking, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just breaking down a rock. You know, rocks can't attack me or anything. But the point is to save time. In StarCraft, time is money. And particularly, you want to get to this center area first, into this uh, tower area, because then you have a positioning advantage over your opponent. If you get here second, your opponent will have that advantage on you. Here you can see it took about three minutes to break down these rocks. And next I'm going to show you how to break down the rocks properly. It's instead of just simply right clicking the rocks, you move your units towards the rocks and then attack it. This way, your units won't get stuck behind other units attacking the rocks, and you have as many units firing at the rocks as possible, killing them as fast as you can. Same thing for the second batch of rocks, except I have some uh, marauders on the low ground if you, if you haven't noticed, attacking upwards. And you just do the same thing for the third set of rocks. You move in towards the rocks, then you fire at them. And uh, notice how I sent a marine up to attack the enemy's rocks. It's important to know whether or not the enemy's almost bro broken down the rocks, otherwise they might actually ambush you while you do it. Sharpshooters, very similar concept to the Marauders. Marauders break down rocks the fastest out of any of the starting mercenary sharpshooters. Uh, they're, they're the second slowest at breaking down rocks, but they're, they're not bad at it. So anyway, same thing, move towards the rocks, attack. Move towards the rock, then attack. Now you might have noticed that I actually hotkeyed my mercenary compound. This way I can use it to set a rally point on the next batch of rocks that I'm going to break. So this way I don't have to keep going back and pulling off sharpshooters to bring new ones to attack. Same thing again, you got to have something watching the enemy rocks just to make sure, you know, he's not breaking down his rocks and he's not going to ambush you. And next is the Zealot. The Zealot, surprisingly, is the second fastest mercenary at starting mercenary at breaking down the rocks. Here you see you want as many zealots to attack the rocks as possible. And uh, then you have the marines closely behind attacking the rocks. Now why is this? Zealots do a lot more damage to the rocks than marines do. So that's why you should prioritize having them attack the rocks. And the same thing down here except that I pull the marines back a bit to let the zealots in. This way the zealots will run through the marines. Make sure you have your marines on stop position or moving away from the zealots to do that. A little bit of technical micro, but it really helps to get used to doing stuff like this. Finally is the zergling. The zergling is unique in this because you don't really want to focus on breaking the rocks. Instead you want to focus on burrowing them across the map for vision. The other mercenaries rely on the towers to have vision of the map. Zerglings, on the other hand, can burrow all over the place and instant vision. You don't even need the towers. Now, you still want to capture the towers as, as even if you use Zerglings to keep the enemy from having the tower. That's generally the main purpose of it. Or, and, and to, you know, know if the enemy's ambushing you through, through the high ground, but uh, it's more important to keep your enemy in the dark. So I keep some Zerglings at the ramp area just in case some someone tries something smart and, well, not really smart, but someone tries some uh, and, and tries to ambush me while I'm doing this. It, it does happen, although it's not very effective, but a lot of people try it. I don't recommend it, by the way. 
And yeah, that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. 